do you get rid of hyperpigmentation when you have very reactive, sensitive skin? And when I say reactive, I mean products that everyone else raves about, like chemical exfoliants, are too harsh for your skin. And that's what happened to Tawa, who is our next guest in our hyperpigmentation series here on the channel. She's gonna talk to us about how she cleared her acne and eventually faded her hyperpigmentation despite having very sensitive and reactive skin. There were some mistakes made, like not wearing sunscreen. But also some lessons learned that you guys can also learn from when it comes to your skin. The most of my hyperpigmentation was caused by acne. Mm -hmm. I never had teenage acne, but during my adulthood, I would have five to 10 every month. And it just became so much, it accumulated into so many dark spots, you know. At the time, we didn't know. I thought squeezing it, popping it was taking care of it. Not knowing that I was causing more, you know, inflammation, which then healed into deeper and darker hyperpigmentation. I was totally insecure about my face. I couldn't go anywhere without concealer or just trying to hide, you know, I'd invested so much in makeup. Another cost I would say is I never wore sunscreen. Mm. The first time I wore sunscreen was in 2011. Okay. So all my life, I never wore sunscreen. And I'm pretty sure that contributed to it because I had lots of dark patches around my eyes, around my nose, around my lips. Mm -hmm. So I would say it's lack of education about yeah. how to take care of your skin. That's what really comes yeah. to mind. And, and I think a lot of people don't realize that UV, you know, sun exposure can worsen pigmentation. So now we know that with hyperpigmentation, it's so difficult to treat your best bet is preventing it. Once you already have, you want to make sure you have a routine, a product, anything to make sure it's not getting worse and you're not getting new ones. First of all, I try to, you know, speak to dermatologists. When you have a major issue, you want to speak with the professionals. So I had like two or three appointments with two different dermatologists. I went to two or three institutions, so I was enlightened. Mm. Honestly, they didn't give me anything that worked for me, but speaking to them really gave me, put me in the direction to what to do, mm -hmm. because I know it's not one size fits all. The information, the knowledge that I got out from them, I did my own research and I was able to create a routine for myself and I got burned, you know, oh, but that was the errors, the burn, it's a learning curve. Honestly, when I started my skincare routine, it's like my skin went 10 times worse. When I became very diligent with my skincare routine, I used a cleanser from a local brand. Mm -hmm. The institution that I saw, she had, um, she had a cleanser called Clear and Hydrate. Mm. And I started to use that. That was more like a repairing cleanser. It was a cleanser that looked like a mask. So it wasn't, it didn't have any soap or anything because my skin was so inflamed. Mm -hmm. You know, I jumped on to hydroquinone. I jumped on to retinol. I jumped on to glycolic acid during my search for a solution. You know, mm -hmm. I just used all these things. And then at that point, my skin was inflamed. So my, you know, the routine had to be a very gentle one. Mm -hmm. I had a PCA hydrating toner, PCA skin hydrating toner. Mm -hmm. I had that in my routine and it really helped. I still use it. So I, I use the P potent C vitamin C serum by Peter Thomas. Okay. Just because my skin was so sensitive, I couldn't use the traditional vitamin C serums. You know, it will burn literally. Mm -hmm. I couldn't just have it on my skin, mm -hmm. but I no longer use it now because of course, skin is good. Skin is healthy and resilient. So I can use a lot more stronger products now. Yeah. But at the time, I would say, the gentle cleanser, the PCA skin toner, potency vitamin C serum. I use the Elta MD UV clear. You know, I went through about two or three bottles of that. Nighttime routine will be to double cleanse. I tried the oil cleanse and it didn't work for me because mm -hmm. I was acne prone. I'm still acne prone. If I use anything off the hook, I break out. So mm -hmm. the oil cleansing didn't work. So I used the micellar water for my first cleanse. 
Mm -hmm. and then I use the same cleanser I use in the morning for my second cleanse. Then I would do the hydrating toner, mm -hmm. which really calms my skin. I love the toner so much. And then I'll go in with a PM therapy from Delta MD at the time, but I didn't use it for too long. That was just a routine that helped me to recover my skin before mm -hmm. I could actually use treatment that would actually work. So if you're dealing yeah. with anything, those things will not really help you. It's, so, it's such a gentle routine to just mm -hmm. get you through that difficult phase. My skin barrier was a mess. Okay, so then once, how long would you say it took for you to kind of like repair your skin barrier and then move About on? About six months. Six months, okay. For the first three months, I couldn't use anything. But after about three months, I, would, I was able to add Obagi vitamin C serum. Mm -hmm. That was a much more stronger vitamin C serum. It has 15% alloscovic acid. So I started that for morning only. Mm -hmm. And then it did help my skin, you know, it gave the skin a good glow. I could see that it was working, mm -hmm. but, um, after using that for about two months, skin became dry. And then mm -hmm. I became confused. How did I go from super oily skin to dry skin? And that's because, you know, the vitamin C was working, but he had so much alcohol in it and it was, it was stripping my skin. Mm -hmm. And at that point I had to change again. So it was a journey of about six months before I was finally able to actually stick to a routine that was working. What would you say were some products that kind of helped you to clear the acne and the hyperpigmentation? With hyperpigmentation, you want to take care of the cost before yes. you actually treat the pigmentation. So. I had to invest so much time to make sure acne was controlled. So there are two products that I can say really helped with my acne. A toner from Obagi, it's really good. I still use it. I would use that every morning. Mm -hmm. And at that point I had to take out the vitamin C serum because mm -hmm. I couldn't use it with the vitamin C serum for my AM routine. Okay. So that was my, that was another routine I had to, you know, switch between for around that time of the month because my my acne isn't all the time it's just around that time of the month so i'll use the toner sometimes i'll do a sulfur mask at night just use a sulfur i mean that's sold on amazon for about seven or ten dollars mm -hmm. it's an acne treatment i would use a mask there are other brands that do sulfur treatment but i feel i don't need to spend so much on sulfur because i know it's a cheap ingredient mm -hmm. so i use that at night and it worked a lot and before I knew it, it would come to that time of the month and I just wouldn't get any acne. Okay. So, um, how long would you say it took for your acne to, um, for you to kind of see some results with the acne? The acne, that was pretty fast. Okay. Within the first month, and it was a good space for someone that was dealing with five, 10 every month. Yeah. To only have one or two and even get through some months without any acne at all. So what did you use to fade the dark spots? Four products that I've used so far. I think they've all worked. The improvement is not obvious, but I would say I started, um, there's a retinol product from Skin Medica. I started mm -hmm. with the 0 0.25 mm -hmm. for a month. And then at the second month, I graduated to 0 0.5 retinol from Skin Medica. I used that every night. Mm -hmm. Of course, I started once a week and then twice a week. And then three times a week up until the, the point where I could use it every night. That really helped with my texture because I had acne bumps on my face. The retinol from Skin Medica really helped, but um, mm -hmm. I knew that I had to go to this prescription strength to really treat my acne. I know acne comes from the inside mm -hmm. and what you put on top doesn't really do much. It can help you manage it, but it's just for a short period of time. Now I use a retinol, a prescription strength 0 0.225, mm -hmm. which is still the lowest, but I would rather use a lower, lower concentration that I can use every day mm -hmm. than use a, a higher concentration that you can only use once a week. It's a tretinoin prescription strength every night mm -hmm. for the last one year. And it's been one of the best decision I made for my skin. I use two pigment inhibitors. Okay. I use um, Schematica Lightera 2.0. I use that on top of my vitamin C every morning. 
Okay. I started using that about four months ago and I've seen tremendous improvement. Another product that I can say really helped my hair pigmentation would be a vitamin C serum, the SkinCeutical vitamin C serum. By itself, it didn't do anything for my skin, but when I pair it with the pigment inhibitor, the Lytera 2.0, it's amazing. So right now my routine is basically targeted towards preventing issues as well as clearing the existing issue. The existing issue being hyperpigmentation. It's not completely gone. I still have it. It's just not as obvious as it was, but they're still very faint on my skin. So I have the Skin Medica in my skincare routine. I use that every morning. I struggle with exfoliation. Glycolic acid, lactic acid, they burn my skin. Mm. They give me more pigmentation. So I've resulted to using physical exfoliants that are very gentle. There are a few ones out there that have very round, smooth particles. So they're less likely to cause any scratch for your skin. Mm. So I really don't do a lot of exfoliation. When I don't do a lot of chemical exfoliation just because it doesn't work for my skin, but that's really great. I've recommended it to a bunch of people. You know, my result got a lot of people asking me questions and I've been able to help a lot of my friends and family and they do well with chemical exfoliant. I just don't use it. Yeah. But in the right concentration, depending on your skin type, I think it's, it's gonna be very helpful because exfoliation is a key part of clearing hyperpigmentation. You know, because you need to get it off. You need to get off dead skin cells. Mm -hmm. So that's something that works. But right now I use an exfoliant. It's a physical mm -hmm. exfoliant. It's from a small brand called Clarista. Mm -hmm. it's, it's a gel physical exfoliant. And I really like it. That helps with the exfoliation. I have a, re a, re a tretinoin. You know, tretinoin exfoliates as well. Yeah. When you have a tretinoin in your routine, you don't really need... A traditional chemical exfoliant but if you must then you just have to balance it so my routine right now is a gentle cleanse a hydrating toner occasionally two three times a week i'll do a gel exfoliant the gel exfoliant has scrubs in it so it's a physical exfoliant and then i'll do vitamin c serum i'm a huge fan of vitamin c serum i know some people don't believe in it but I use it and it's been good for my skin. And then I'll do the Lytera 2.0. Become a queen of sunscreen. I use it every morning. It's in my bag. It's in my car. I reapply every two to three hours, you know, and that has really helped. Do you still use the L to MD um, sunscreen? No. Yeah. No. Oh, I've used, <laughs> I've used more than 20 sunscreens oh, since God. then. Because I'm always on the lookout for what's new, what's good. Yes. My skin is reactive, so I don't do well with chemical sunscreens not mm -hmm. that i don't use it at all but i would rather use the physical sunscreen the mineral mineral ones mm -hmm. and you know the white cast i don't want to look ghosty so every time there's a new sunscreen out there if it's a mineral sunscreen and has any claims i'm on it i'm trying it if it works i'll use it for a while if i find something else i'm jumping jumping sunscreen yeah. is one of those things that you really don't have to stick to because it's a protect mm -hmm. it's to prevent your skin from issues and i know you rotate between mineral sunscreens but i could already see somebody like typing in the comments like which sunscreens are your favorites like so what are some of your favorite mineral sunscreens? skin medica has a sunscreen spf 36 mm -hmm. i don't think that's enough spf so i would say if you want to try to skip skin medica you want to try to make sure you're reapply if you're going to be in the sun and that's why i use the color signs unforgettable spf 50 okay. they have a glow tint and a bronze tint i'm mm -hmm. dark so i use the bronze tint mm -hmm. and that works pretty well it's nice under makeup you can even skip your foundation and just go in with a nice bronzing powder that works mm -hmm. pretty nice on brown skin so i would say that's my favorite sunscreen right now but I switch every now and then. So that's been my routine so far. I don't yeah. skip my nighttime routine. I never skip it, no matter how tired I am. And I have a peptide in my routine too for anti-aging, you know, 36 now. So I have two babies. I need to start focusing on the aging. Yeah. Because I'm beginning to see a little bit of the lines. I also use an eye cream. I didn't mention that. Mm -hmm. I use an eye cream, not because I have anything around my eyes, but I use it as a protective measure. 
because you may not have anything now, but as you age, things will happen. So I use an eye cream. It's cheap. It's from Rock. It's just yes. $16. Mm-hmm. And it works fine. That's something I spend on lunch, on Uber or anything. The drawbacks that I went through is one of those things that I think can be avoided. If you have someone guiding you, if you have a good esthetician, or you're very diligent with looking at the inky list. For me, I never knew I had issues with fragrances and skincare. I loved fragrances. Matter of fact, I would buy it because of the smell. Mm-hmm. You know, it was a huge learning curve for me to realize that my skin doesn't do too well with fragrances. And that was my biggest drawback. A bunch of the product that I use had fragrance and I had contact dermatitis, which was took literally forever to get treated. So mm-hmm. that was something. So you, you want to make sure you're patch testing. And that doesn't really work. Sometimes you put it everywhere and it's fine. And then you use it on your face. There's an issue. So I think the chit chat for this one would be be very observant with how your skin behaves when you use a product mm-hmm. so watch how your skin looks like you know and then with that you'll be able to figure out what works and what doesn't work now we're not just gonna stop there there are so many more things for you to learn about hyperpigmentation what are the best actives the truths about hyperpigmentation some of those mistakes you might be making and also how do other people deal with fading hyperpigmentation when they also have things like rosacea facial hair, really sensitive skin. Make sure you check that out. I will link that above and below. Also follow Tawa. She has an active Instagram at Skincare by Tawa. I will link that below. Make sure you follow her. And while you're in the description box, there are also links where you can follow me on Instagram, TikTok, you know, so on and so forth, my vlog. Make sure you check that out and I'll see you fine folks in my next video. Bye guys.